inheritance tax and minimizing it is of course a really important factor in successful intergenerational planning and when you're thinking about giving assets away passing assets on to the next generation you naturally think of inheritance tax when you think about the tax implications of those lifetime gifts or gifts on debt but it's really really important to take into account that other important capital tax and that is capital gains tax at least of course for the assets that are taxable for capital gains tax purposes of course your main residence isn't we still have the main residence principal private residence exemption cash isn't subject to capital gains tax but most of the other stuff that you own is and so cgt is something to very much bear in mind first point to bear in mind in relation to cgt reminders when it comes to wealth transfer and thinking about intergenerational planning is of course the fact that it remains the case and this was one of the proposals of the office of tax simplification was to remove this but it remains the case because those proposals aren't being uh, proceeded with it remains the case he says for the third time um, that all capital gains are wiped out for tax purposes on death not literally wiped out you still have the gain in the asset but from a an inheritor's standpoint you inherit the asset at its base value at the date of death so you only pay tax on a future disposal on any increase in the value from that point all those past gains that are built up during the life of the testator the person that leaves the asset to you are wiped out from a tax standpoint that's a really important point for those who are later on in in years and thinking about hmm, i should maybe think about giving some assets away during my lifetime if those assets are rich full with capital gains unrealized then you need to do your sums in terms of right you're going to make this gift and it gets it out of your estate but the tax benefits of that from an inheritance tax standpoint won't be felt or realized until you've survived that gift by seven years broadly um, and the cgt wipeout will be gone because you make the transfer during a lifetime and you have capital gains tax to consider and you've made a gift of it and there won't be the cgt wipeout on death not only will there not be the CGT wipeout on debt, it may well be that the very gift triggers a capital gains tax liability. How's that, you say, because I'm making a gift, I'm not selling it. Well, a disposal of an asset that is a capital gains taxable asset um, to a connected person, which most of the people who you're going to think about making gifts to would be members of your family, your near and even more distant members of your family, will probably fall within that definition of connected persons spouses, children, grandchildren, etc. then that disposal is treated as if you've made a sale of that asset at its market value and a CGT liability will arise. Oh, damn. So you've got to wait till you get your inheritance tax liability, but have an immediate CGT liability and, of course, no wipeout of the CGT on debt. Needs careful thinking about, especially for older would-be potential donors. Now, there is a way, of course, of I'll say of course maybe you don't know this or you've forgotten it of um of deferring the capital gain that could be payable on a gift now if and that's through what's known as not park life but holdover relief so you make a transfer of a business asset shares in a trading company uh, business assets in a sole tradership basically business assets you can hold over the gain so you make a transfer to the individual you get it out of your state for inheritance tax, you hold over the capital gain. You still lose that potential wipeout on death or the actual wipeout of CGT that will, of capital gain that will happen on death, but you avoid the immediate need to pay the capital gains tax. Another holdover opportunity is if you make the transfer of any asset actually into a discretionary trust because that transfer is treated as a chargeable transfer for inheritance tax even if no inheritance tax is payable because it falls within the nil rate band there is the ability to hold over that is defer the capital gain into the trust so you still don't get the wipeout on death you always lose that when you make a gift of the asset but you do avoid the immediate charge to capital gains tax there will also remain the opportunity to hold over the gain again when the asset passes out of the trust because the passing out of the asset from a discretionary trust will itself also be a chargeable transfer so your the def deferment keep in mind it is deferment the gain isn't wiped out as it would be on death it's just rolled over and rolled over to the person that eventually gets it and eventually disposes of it so a couple of things to bear in mind there but the main message there is 
think very carefully about capital gains tax when you're thinking of intergenerational planning, especially in relation to lifetime gifts, given that capital gains from a tax standpoint are wiped out on death. Now you might go, but that's not the case with the main residents, is it? They're completely tax free. Yeah, I know, but it's really hard to make a tax effective gift, an inheritance tax effective gift of your main residence if you're going to carry on living there and not jointly occupy the property with the person you've given it to or pay a full market rent for your continued occupation of that property. So a lot to think about there. There's a lot more to it than the immediacy of, oh, get it outside your estate for inheritance tax. And of course, all of that lot to think about is covered in the detail you'd expect and require in TechLink.